Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Men's. Today we're studying Judges chapter 9. Let's get started. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so Gideon has died, um, and we saw that in the yesterday's yes, video, and his son Abimelech thinks he can take over. And so basically he goes and visits uh, Gideon's 70 sons and kills them all, except for one, because that one ran away, and his name is... Jotham. Uh, Jotham. And he hid... Yeah. Okay. So, this is a little viewer discretion is advised. Um, if you are not discussing the gory events <laughs> that happen in this chapter. Um, so, we meet Gideon's son, Abimelech. And Gideon died yesterday in chapter 8. And so, when Gideon dies, Abimelech seems to think that he should be in charge. Right, John? Mm -hmm. And basically, he will go to any lengths, y'all. And I mean any lengths to make that happen. He goes to his mother's people. And so, you know, back then, a lot of the people were married to lots of different women. They had lots of wives and concubines and slaves and stuff. And so, um, he goes to where his mother was from, and that was Shechem. And he talks to his uncles there, and he says, Look, Gideon, Dad's dead. We have 70 kids at this point. Um, do you want 70 leaders or do you want one leader? And he convinces his uncles, well, of course we want one leader. And of course we want it to be our family. And so those uncles go to the leaders of Shechem and talk to them. And those leaders decide, okay, that's fine. And so they decide that Abimelech will lead them. And they will help him do whatever it takes. And so Abimelech gets his other brothers... Um, 70 brothers, it says, which is all of them except for one. We're going to find out. And Shechem and Abimelech killed all those brothers, except for Jotham. Well, when Jotham, then Shechem makes Abimelech their king, basically. And, um, they kind of announce it to the Israelites, this is the new king. And so I don't, I'm not sure how well that's going, but Israel has lost its mind right now at this point, and they are not following God. And um, so Jotham, the baby brother, who's the youngest of Gideon's sons, he finds out about Abimelech becoming king. And he tells a story. He tells a fable about these trees, which is basically a story saying that Shechem made a bad choice by choosing Abimelech to be their king. And they had him, um, they had to commit a horrible sin in order for him to be in charge. And because of that, he basically says that God's going to judge them. And he says, his actual words were, um, you know, if you're okay, you'll be fine. But if you're in the wrong, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leaders. And so he's, he's telling Shechem, this was a bad plan. And so after Jotham tells all this, after he says all that he wants to say, he runs away for safety because obviously Abimelech's not afraid to kill people, even his own brothers. And so then the Bible tells us that Abimelech ruled Israel for three years, but then God judged them just like Jotham said he would do. And so he makes the people of Shechem, the people of Shechem, God makes the people of Shechem turn against Abimelech. And so they start arguing and fighting against each other. And Abimelech is pretty, he pretty much destroys the city of Shechem. And the Bible tells us he sprinkled salt all over it, basically destroying the land so nothing could grow there. Um, and then the leaders of Shechem run away and they go up to the tower of Shechem and crazy old Abimelech finds out where they are. He sets the tower on fire and he kills all the leaders of Shechem. It said over a thousand people. But the story's not over yet. Abimelech is still on his rampage, and he turns to this place called Thebes, Thebes, something like that. And he fights to capture it. And he finds out that all the people there and all the leaders of this place have also run to their tower. And so he's like, oh, I'm a pro at this. Guess what he plans to do? He plans to go light that on fire as well. But what he didn't know was there was a woman at the top of the tower holding a huge millstone and she drops it from above him and it falls onto his head and it cracks his head and basically Abimelech is dying 
and he begs his armor bearer, the man who helps carry his weapons and stuff, he begs him to kill him so that no one could ever say that a woman killed him. Well, guess what? We know better. So, that's a lot. That's a lot of drama. That's a lot of violence. And that's how we know um, judges to be. But there are plenty of takeaways. Um, first of all, don't be like Abimelech. That's a good, that's a good uh, way to live. We must humble ourselves. We must put away any greed that we have, any pride that we have, any desire to control things. Abimelech wanted power and status so badly that he was willing to do anything so that he could control and manipulate the whole situation, whatever it took to make it happen. He was so consumed with this desire for power and greed that he was willing to kill his very own brothers. And this wasn't a quick job, y'all. He had 70 brothers. Um, and so something important for us to realize, pride and greed and sin of all types will blind us and it will make us make bad choices and it will make us do things that we would never dream that we could ever do. And we need to always take those things seriously. Abimelech didn't just wake up one day and say, I want to be a murderer. It was a, a, a slow fade, a, something that happened in his life slowly by disobedience to God, by maybe one tiny choice at a time. And then his heart was hardened and it turned away where it could commit these atrocities. Um, Tara Lee Cobble in the Bible Recap had some really interesting thoughts on this chapter. The Bible tells us that at uh, that Abimelech kills his brother, 70 brothers with one stone. And it's important for us to remember that at this time, these people were lost as a goose. And these were God's people, but they were not following God. They were not worshiping God. They were wa worshiping false gods. Uh, namely, this situation, Baal was a, a popular God that they worship. And so when Abimelech kills his brothers with one stone, what's probably happening is this stone was actually probably an altar, a stone altar to Baal. That's, that's an interesting take on, you know, what that one sentence says. But another thing that's, I guess, ironic, but also we know God is in charge and he makes the plan. So it's really interesting and intentional. Um, is that Abimelech, how was Abimelech killed? Uh, with a stone. With a stone. Isn't that interesting? The way he killed his brothers was the way that he was killed. And so that's an interesting fact about this chapter. Um, and I guess rounding down to my personal takeaway, you probably noticed that there was not a lot of mention of God in this. Jotham seemed to be the only one who remembered that these people were not in charge. God's supposed to be the one who was in charge. And so my takeaway is the reminder reminder that I never want to get so caught up and so blinded by my own plans and my own desires that I forget to ask God his will and his plan for my life. I never want to forget that I'm not in charge. I want to remember that God is in charge. Abimelech died while trying to manipulate his legacy. He wanted people to remember certain things about him. And then here we are today, thousands of years later, using him as an example of how not to be, of what not to do. And so my reminder through this chapter today is that God is the best author of our stories. So let's let him be the writer of our stories. Let's not try to take control. Let's remember to look to him over and over again in all of our decisions. All right, friends, thank you for joining us in this adventure of Judges. <laughs> Who knows what tomorrow is going to bring? But we'll see you guys here. Bye. Bye.